Good morning. I'm Angie Austin with Oil and Gas 360, and we are here at the 2015 Entercom Oil and Gas Conference, the 20th year of the conference, and we're being joined by the President and Chief Executive Officer of Strategic Oil and Gas. Uh, his name is Gupreet Sawney. I got it, didn't I? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. All right, so how long have you been coming to the conference? Ah, this is our fourth year. Yeah. Yeah, it's been phenomenal. We we, uh, I started coming here and um, we found some of our biggest investors here. So today I think a big part of where strategic is, is uh, courtesy of Fenercom. So really? absolutely. Well, that's exciting well. for us to yeah. hear. Yeah. Our biggest shareholder, uh, GMT Capital, they own about 60% of our company and that's where I first met Tom. Really? Yeah, I see a lot of meetings taking place, yeah. a lot of networking, and so that's been very obviously effective for you. Uh, do you hold quite a few meetings when you're here, meet a lot of different people? Yeah, we, we have about half a day, uh, one once, and then obviously the evening events are great to meet people. and. Uh, and overall, uh, it's it's just it's so important to just get your face out there, the name of the company, and and it's a lot of a lot of it is just people see you, people start trusting you, people see what you're doing, and that's how you, I guess, build a company. So. Well, I've got quite a few questions for you, but just out of curiosity, I'd love to start with you know you're based in Canada. Yeah. Are there any big differences you see between the operations run out of Canada and here in the U.S.? Uh, you know, the one big thing is uh, we work in minus 40 degrees Celsius. <laughs> yeah, that's a big <laughs> yeah, difference from a, Texas, for instance. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of our operations are in northern Canada. And, uh, you know, we work on ice roads. Uh, we, uh, we drill when, when it's minus 35, minus 40 degrees Celsius. Now, I should be converting it in Fahrenheit, but it's cold. It's yes. really cold. And, Even uh, without conversion, we understand it's quite <laughs> chilly. It's, it's very chilly. And uh, overall, I think there are a lot of similarities of uh, how things are done here. In, uh, safety is paramount for us in Canada. I see safety being uh, high standards of safety in the U.S. And, and other than that, there's a lot of similarities in how we work up there. Yeah. Beautiful country, that's for sure. All right, let's get into some of the uh, more in-depth questions. You've said before that Strategic owns everything in the top 70 mi uh, miles of Alberta. How did you build that position and what kind of benefits do you realize from your infrastructure? Um, we, uh, we discovered a massive resource when we came up uh, in Canada. There's, there's, a, there's a trend in our oil and gas patch to follow whatever is the hottest thing. Right. And, uh, and if you look at where Strategic started four years ago, it was the Bakken at that time. And our initial thought process was to kind of just follow that trend, but what we realized, our, sub, our strength was subsurface. So we had some of the best subsurface guys in our team, and they found this play. They found this play, and uh, it is massive. It's about 400 square miles, and to really exploit that, we needed to control the infrastructure. So we started acquiring infrastructure. We, there was three other players in that area, so we acquired all the plants, pipelines, and uh, over the last year or so, we have tied it. So Strategic Today controls all the infrastructure up in northern, northern Alberta. I can tell you have a passion for what you do. You enjoy it. All right, can you explain the quality of your flagship asset, the Muskeg Formation? Yeah, it's uh, the Muskeg Formation, it's a uh, it's a, it's a formation, the way I, uh, way I like to describe it is when the Bakken was initially discovered, the Bakken is sandstone, stringers of sand in shale. And uh, what we discovered is carbonate, the dolomite stringers that are embedded in anhydrite. So, so there are similarities that way, but uh, this is if it's a conventional play. Um, we are talking porosity and permeability of conventional rock. We have eight to ten percent porosity. The permeabilities are five to ten um, millidarcies, which is an order of magnitude or two orders of magnitude better than what some of the other plays have. So we are dealing with conventional rock, the rock that wants to flow oil and gas, and and I think. Um, what we are doing today is using a lot of non-conventional technologies uh, to exploit these plays. This kind of rock was um, exploited in Canada, in the U.S. in the 60s, but where we are, we still have that good quality rock. But the advantage we have today is we're using the technologies from 
2010, not 1970, to exploit it. So it makes a huge difference, doesn't absolutely. it? Absolutely, absolutely. All right, let's talk about uh, some cost benefits. What kind yeah. of cost benefits are you realizing from the uh, Bisho sales oil pipeline? So one of the things we realized, uh, what has been the Achilles heel in this area is, is high. It's a high cost operation. It's northern Canada. Um, people have come and tried to operate in this area, but half-heartedly. So when we came in, we saw significant amount of inefficiencies in the process. So we acquired the pipeline infrastructure from three different operators and tied it together to have a 115 kilometer long pipeline in one quarter. Wow. If I had to get the regs to get that pipeline done, it would have been a three year process. So we got the pipeline done because we knew that one of the key components to bring our operating cost down was, tra was transportation. I was paying $6 a barrel to the trucking companies to truck my product. Oh my. So getting that pipeline in helped us el eliminate all oil and gas trucking. We started to save an extra $6 a barrel. Our operating cost in that area came from $26 to now about 16 to 17 dollars a barrel significant that, decrease yes and six dollars out of that decrease is just eliminating trucking and uh, i think in today's pricing environment when oil is down to 41 dollars those savings are really making us uh, making us uh, be in the green <laughs> yeah really stand out all right, let's talk about uh, the downturn. You know, a lot of the operators uh, have battened down the hatches in the downturn. Yeah. What kind of price environment do you believe is necessary in order to recommence drilling operations? Uh, you know, uh, as, uh, as a lot of other companies, we have, we have, uh, we have taken some measures. So we have cut down our staff uh, by about 30%. We have reduced our operating costs. Uh, we, the last well we drilled was early January, and over the last uh, seven to eight months, we have been planning, a big part of this year, we have been just planning, and we have developed a five-year strategy, and this five-year strategy allows us to grow the company from uh, 2,200 barrels to over 20,000 barrels in today's pricing environment. So a lot of preparation taking place. Absolutely, but planning. the key here is strategic can start drilling in a $45 environment and grow our company in a $55 to $60 environment over the next couple of years. So we, we can do that because we control all the infrastructure, we control a significant amount of acreage, and uh, we believe those efficiencies will help us build the company and make us profitable in a $50 environment. So. All right, I want to talk about opportunities. What kind of opportunities do you think your North Alberta assets have in comparison to a more traditional operating area, for example, the Bakken? A couple of different things. The first thing is, uh, as, it's, uh, as I uh, alluded to earlier, is, is the quality of the reservoir. We are talking conventional rock. Uh, this is, we have some wells that are producing 300 DOEs a day at the end of a year, not at the start, not an IP30. So the Bakken versus uh, the um, Muskeg is the one is the quality of the rock. We are dealing with conventional rock, and the second is um, the area. We are in an area where Strategic owns 350,000 net acres of land, which are contiguous over the oil pool. So gives us a lot of room to grow. If we were chasing Bakken, we would have an, a, a section or four sections of land with a lot of other players. That leads to a significant amount of inefficiency. So we have a great opportunity to grow uh, up in Northern Canada. Well, I, I get a kick out of you because we know we spoke before the interview and yeah. um, you don't waste any time. You yeah. finished college at 19. You had your master's by your early 20s. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I got married, had four kids. Like, you, you just go for it. Do you handle your business the same way? I mean, you seem like you really are a, little, a bit of an overachiever, Gupreet. Well, there's stuff <laughs> that is uh, in my control and I can 
plug away and finish my degree or get married, but <laughs> I, I, I applied the same principles in the oil and gas batch, but there's so many external parameters like the oil price that's not under right. control. So, so we, what we have done is we are focused to deliver, we are focused to grow, but we are very adaptable. Since we control all of this, we can scale back and we can restart or, or grow at a faster pace when we can. So, yeah, I would like to grow strategic at a very fast pace, but it has to be making money. Right. And the, the, the fact that we have very strong insider shareholders, about 70% of our company are held by insiders. So we, we can make decisions that are very beneficial to the company very quickly. And you seem to be very optimistic. Is it, how do you keep your optimism in the midst of a downturn, which I know you've been in the business for years, so you've yeah. seen things like this before. You know, I believe that uh, the way I look at things is, you know, I, I go for a run every now and then, and sometimes there are steep hills, and if I look at the end of the hill, I would never be able to do it. So I <laughs> like to keep true? my head down and say, take the next 10 steps. And what I believe, I believe that this asset is a phenomenal asset. I believe we can build a significant company out of this asset. So every morning when I get up, I have a task list. I want to do the right things. I do the right things and then keep keep my focus on where we are going. Yeah. But if I, if I do what I wanted to do that day and I believe in it, I will achieve what I want to at the end of the day. Well, I, I think you're a fantastic interview. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you. Gupreet Thanks Sani. Thanks for All right, Angie Austin here at uh, with Oil & Gas 360 at the 2015 Oil & Gas Conference with Intercom, the 20th year, and we just interviewed uh, Gupreet Sani. Thanks, Gupreet. Thank you.